Welcome to Distributed Computing Module 1 Session Videos. So in this video session, we'll be discussing about the Module 1 concepts which includes distributed system and its characteristics, different examples of distributed systems, evolution of distributed computing, the main issues in designing such a distributed system, different distributed computing system models and trends. Okay, so this is the first session and he here we are going to discuss about the first three concepts that is distributed system characteristics, examples and evolution. So before getting into the topic, let's let us discuss what is a distributed system and uh, why it is important. Okay, so as we all know, in order to perform a computation, it may be able to do with a single workstation. Workstation in the sense, it is a complete standalone system. Okay, so with the help of such workstations, we may be able to come. We may be able to do our computations. We may be able to do our task. But the thing is, when we need more processing capabilities or more resources, uh. A particular standalone system may not be efficient or capable to perform such a tedious task. In that case, we may be going for other alternatives, such as we may be going for we may be going for higher computational capabilities. Even we may be thinking about supercomputers and all, right? So I'm 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 actually telling about such a task which need huge computational power. So in that case, we may need a supercomputer, but it is always not affordable, right? Instead of that, what we can do is we can connect individual standalone systems and we can make use of the individual systems capabilities. We can share resources, we can share the computational capabilities and we can design such a distributed system. So individual systems which are connected through a communication network and which are possible, which can perform such higher computational tasks can be called as a distributed system. So let us discuss this concept in detail. So a distributed system is one at which components located at network computers communicate and coordinate their actions only by passing messages. A distributed system consists of a collection of autonomous computers linked by a computer network and equipped with a distributed system software. And the software enables computers to coordinate their activities and to share the resources of the system hardware, software and data. Computers that are connected by a network may be spatially separated by any distance. They may be on separate continents and the same building or in the same room. So this is the basic concept of distributed system. So any devices which are networked or which have a communication link and they are performing a particular task together that can be called as a distributed system. Let me give you a very simple example. You have your DSLR and you want to transfer file to your PC. So you are connecting these two devices and you are performing the action. So it is actually a distributed system. You're going out and you're collecting cash from ATM. So there also we can see that there are so many devices are collectively performing in order to do that particular task. So that is also a distributed system. So this is the basic concept of distributed system. A distributed system is one in which components located at network computers communicate and coordinate their actions only by passing messages. So as we already told, these are the examples of distributed systems, internet, mobile computing, intranet, multiplayer online games. These all are examples of distributed systems. Whenever we are using one or more devices, we are connecting them and we are performing a particular task, we can say that yes, it is an example of a distributed system. And there are so many characteristics of such distributed systems. 
so let us ex let us explain these characteristics in detail the first one is concurrency of components second one is lack of global clock and third one is independent failures of components concurrency of components means see we are actually considering uh, the whole system as a single system even if we have individual systems which are connected together we are viewing it as a single system okay so the thing is individual devices can be can be concurrently performed okay so that is the primary characteristic in a network computers concurrent program execution is a norm systems can perform their work concurrently sharing resources such as web pages or files when necessary and the second one is lack of global clock see when we are using a single system uh, let us take example of your computer your pc so in order to synchronize the actions we have a system clock but in the case of a distributed system it is not there so there is lack of global clock a system with its sub components that can be synchronized with a common clock but that is not the case where there are more systems taking part in action so close coordination often depends on shared idea of time at which the programs action occur but it, it turns out that there are limits to the accuracy with which a computers in a network can synchronize their clocks okay so that is the idea behind lack of global clock and the third one is independent failures of components see there can be devices uh, or the uh, there may be some situations in which one or more devices may fail right but uh, if you are looking overall it won't affect the overall system's performance the failure of a computer or the unexpected termination of a program somewhere in the system is not immediately made known to other components with which it communicates each component of the system can fail independently leaving the others still running so it is the third characteristics which is independent failure of components so these are the basic characteristics of a distributed system and the fourth one is it actually focusing on resource sharing see as we already discussed there are so many examples see even if we are taking examples or uh, example of a search engine it provides facility to users throughout the world and even if you are taking example of a computer supported cooperative working cs cws it is actually a group of users who can cooperate directly share resources such as our documents in a small closed group okay so in all these cases the term service for a distinct part of computer system that manages a collection of related resources and presents their functionality to users and applications for example we access shared files through a file service we send documents to printers through a printing service we buy goods through an electronic payment service the only access we have to service is via set of operations that it exports for example a file service provides read write and delete operations on files so overall such distributed systems are focusing on resource sharing okay so hope you all are clear about the idea what a distributed system is and what are the basic characteristics of a distributed system let us move to the next topic evolution of distributed computing so as we already know we started with the serial computing then it came to parallel and after that distributed computing is there okay so initially we have done like batch processing one instruction after another like that or one task after another in in that fashion but in order to improve the processing capabilities we actually uh we actually gone to this uh, parallel processing thing and after that now we are in the distributed computing era it is more efficient so the features are in serial processing it limits to uh, limits to miniaturization there are economic limits but when we came to parallel processing multiple cpus in a single computer and and they can be utilized at the same time multi or many core architectures are there 
uh, you know quad core and all right okay and at that or this particular characteristic or parallel computing can be also mentioned as tightly coupled computing because here actually in a single system we are sharing clock memory and it runs on a single OS and frequent communications are occurring. On the other hand when we move towards distributed computing progress made networks faster and cheaper it's powerful and loosely coupled so when parallel processing is tightly coupled we can mention distributed computing as loosely coupled because each processor has its, to, uh, its own memory runs independent OS and infrequent communications are happening so the devices are individual and they have its own memory and they run, run on independent OS's and there are infrequent communication but it is more efficient so that is all about evolution of distributed computing so hope you all are clear about the concept what a distributed system is what are the characteristics examples and evolution thank you